Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to PCM22 Dragons. This is episode 11. At the moment of starting this recording, I've had myself a busy day and I'm already past my window in which I record and it's already getting pretty late into the evening. So I'm not 100% sure whether I'm still going to be getting this episode out today or not. I had a number of things going on, but let's try and see what we can get done and hopefully this is to you on time or maybe only a little bit later into the day if anything else but we've reached mid-may a couple things have happened one we, we started open the opening the dossiers and there aren't any six star prospects this year unfortunately so no new six star prospects in the database will be signing with us but there are still some good ones out there and we'll certainly target those individuals and I'm already going to retract my previous statement I did find one so we do have one six star prospect uh, coming in not overall but six stars in an individual discipline but one thing I have done differently with the dossiers is I do have a couple of larger profile writers that we are going to try and sign one of those is the re-signing of soon to be expiring Oscar, who just in the last day or two has leveled up yet again and is now seen as a five star prospect and not a four and a half star guy. Oh, I don't know because his sprint is the same. It's a 79. His flat, his flat, I believe, went up. It was in the 60s. Last I checked, if I remember correctly. So he did go up to a 70 flat. He's still only a 63 stamina and a 75 acceleration. So outside of adding a point or two of flat, he seems to be the same. Stamina might be plus one. He was maybe a 62, but no noticeable change. So I'm not sure how he's suddenly seen as a five-star guy. But importantly for us, he has no interest in re-signing, and he is one of the two guys that I am targeting now and in one single chat one single dossier period uh, he's picked up something like 20 22 percent so we actually might even get him all the way up to 100 percent and get a discount and maybe get him re-signed budget may be tight but i think with him and with the other one we are surely continental pro which means we can count on more money coming in through winnings than what we've had which means we could stretch that budget a bit further next season Haas also has just leveled up and is now a four and a half star guy with four and a half stars at climbing in fact he looks to have just about maxed out what he could achieve there he's got maybe one point left in terms of a mountain rating of 77 now it's not great 72 stamina 71 resistance but it's adequate and enough adequate guys together decent guys together and you know we can get the occasional result here and there that's certainly enough to provide some better support for Yamamoto than what we've been seeing of late and that does now give me a top three all at four and a half stars or better with one of them now at five stars that alone, if we just retain Oscar, that alone is enough to get up into Continental Pro for sure. With a very short prologue of just 4.6 kilometers in length, we are going to want to push pretty hard. Zhu is the first one to set off. He's unfortunately got a minus three, and it's hard to gauge how much effort to put in, but it looks like a a 90 might be about right with this one. I mean, there's definitely some undulation here. Maybe it's the 91 that's necessary, but there's an uphill sector there. And oh, another downhill. Man, this is hard to judge. Eighth, 15 seconds down. That's not last right now, but that's not a very good time compared to the others. But man, oh man, is that one a hard hard stage to judge with the undulation you have over such a short period of time i'm thinking somewhere around a 90 is going to be the appropriate effort level to be consistent throughout let's see if that's the case with the next guy 
And Chu is the next one, and he's a good pro logger. He's got a 76 today on a zero race day condition. We are trying the 90. We will see how well this does because that uphill sector is definitely going to go a little bit deeper. For now, he's got that little bit extra in reserve, but then we hit this uphill sector, and that burns through it, but he, you know, did okay there and pushes for the line. Third place, just six seconds down. And that's what we are aiming for is some good times here in the prologue because this and one punchy stage are all there are to this race. That and the presence of Taddy Pogacar. Lieberman is one of our best time trialists, but he's not as good as a prologger. And any distance shorter than five kilometers is a 100% prologue rating. Our time trial rating means absolutely nothing here. So he just a 70 with a 73 resistance plus that little bit of undulation. I think there's that one section that is just about hard enough uh, to push uh, climbing wise and, and use your mountain rating just a little bit. Or presumably at 90 effort, it would be a mix of mountain and hills. Lieberman 19 seconds down. Chu is now 11 seconds behind new leader Matthias Brandl. And Manier has just taken the lead uh, by less than a second. And Kayama will set off next. And he's got a plus four. I like it. I like it. That's good. His plus four is certainly a bonus, but his base, just a 62 prologue. So even then, it's still only a 71. Looks like you could also go just a little bit deeper. Yeah, that helps. That, that gave him a little bit more. You can go 91 part of the time. But of course, he had big bonuses to help him out. Just 14 seconds down for him. Second best on the team up to this point. Now, our team leader is Oscar, but our best prologue and time trialist overall is Abdul. Let's hope he's got a good race day condition. He has a fitness peak. He has an objective for this race. He should be having a very good race day condition. He doesn't. It's just an okay race day condition. It's only a plus one. Oh, as expected was a plus four so a minus three draw for him and the weather is the only reason why it wasn't a plus five All right, so that does hurt a little bit but it's still a 78 prologue it's still looking to be a pretty decent time and maybe could crack the top 10 as he hits the hill that's not his strength but he is a little bit punchy and he approaches the line in fifth place just Five seconds down, right ahead of Cockard, who's here as well. There's going to be some names. Lutsenko is 11, by the way. Next up and final rider for us is Oscar as Patty Bevan. Pat Bevan goes top of the time charts. Ayuso is here and in fifth now. Oscar, his base is only a 61, but he does have a decent race day condition, enough to give him a 66, but that's not going to make for a very good time. For now, Abdul hangs on to a top 10. Not sure if he will keep it as Court Nielsen goes second, just missing the win. Oscar attacking the climb. He's not very punchy. He's going to need really, really good race day conditions to be useful. It's the sprint that we are hoping to get something from him on. And he's going to be 25 seconds down in 64th. That, that's not enough to be competitive. Abdul is the only option we have. Shoot's only 14 seconds down. Kayam is only 17. They're not that far behind, but how or where would we grab time to win overall when you have the likes of Lutsenko, you have Cockard, you have... Pagatcher, Connor Swift is decent. I, there's plenty of talent. Ayuso, Ayuso and Pagatcher are probably heavy. Pidcock is here as well. Look at those ratings of Pidcock. 74 Mountain, 80 Hills. Romo, same. And Pagatcher. Yeah, good luck to us in this race. You could easily be starstruck under these circumstances. 
Abdul does hang on to a top 10 with a ninth place finish on the stage, though. That's impressive stuff for our team. All right, we are straight on to the final stage of this race. And we're in a favorable spot, not to win, but we're in a favorable spot for a respectable finish. There aren't any climbs. There aren't any cl climbs to really bother with. So I want to get us into a favorable position still for this first time check and try to set up Abdul, who is all the way up in fifth place right now. So Abdul in fifth place. So let's get to Kayama to protect. Uh, let's get Osgur to sit up as he is our sprinter for the day. He's looking really good. I've got a lot of fitness peaks within the team. Four of them now. Not all of them started here. Uh, but for now, we are trying to keep these guys uh, from breaking away. Back up just a little bit with these two. Long enough. We got 28k to go. We've got to avoid a breakaway escaping so that we can uh, try to get some seconds here for Abdul as he's never going to win a proper sprint. And we're going to have to switch off who is doing this here soon enough. Give Lieberman a break first and Kayama is going to take over. And then Chu can take a break as well. Protect Abdul. Uh, we need to protect Oscar. I don't know why Oscar. Oh, I know why Oscar. So, no, I don't know why he's so tired. Today he's got excellent conditions. Anyway, there are five riders and they are a minute ahead, uh, and we are just seven k away. It's time to full sprint train, I suppose. We will sit up after this one. They will get their recovery in. They'll just be more tired later on, but. Uh, Abdul should we just go ahead and set up and protect our overall team leader for the sprint anyway 6k to go one rider already dropped and we are coming pretty quickly back towards these guys on the Lieberman 2k there's still 4 guys and they're still 45 seconds ahead how have they managed to stay that far out, I don't think we're going to catch... Maybe. It's an uphill climb. Let's go, Lieberman. Full sprint. We've split off the field, but... It looks like we're going to pass up at least one of them before the line. Maybe. But that's not enough. And that's not our guy. That's Kayama. Three of them stayed ahead. Boy, we really tried not to let them get very far, but they got far enough, didn't they? And we get these four guys in the break. A leader is down. The team plans could well be turned upside down. Will they let us escape and join the front breakaway guys? We'll see. For now it's out to 45 seconds. Out to 50 seconds. Will they see us as harmless? And let us get the get in the break, in which case we can get Abdul three seconds here. Now, how much does three seconds actually gain in the standings? Because I didn't check how close we are. I know the leader is well ahead. Mm, three seconds only gets you fourth. That's really not worth it. But we have managed to get in the break anyway. Lieberman's done, but he can go back. We don't need to go 89 anymore, by the way back off a lot and we're back in the peloton but like I said at this point three seconds wouldn't be enough anyway he needs four seconds to break into the podium therefore we're just gonna focus on the stage I just did that all for nothing I'm sorry <laughs> this is what happens when you are rushing to get something in before you need to go to dinner on Valentine's Day. 71k left to go. We are going to need to get water one additional time. Uh, we've got a lot of extra fatigue in the legs, but you know, hey, it was fun. It was fun. So much fun. Abdul. 
Now that we got you recovered, let's get you back in position here. And let's let these guys ease off a little bit. We don't need to be pushing 99s. The current breakaway has five riders. They still have a two minute advantage with just 37 kilometers. And they got up the road pretty late. And Chu like has gone down. He's definitely part of our lead out team, but he will not be a part of it the rest of the way. These guys are not gonna get back in contact. We're gonna have to put him on auto. I don't suspect he'll get back in contact anyway. And Lieberman gets dropped. Did I put you on auto? I don't remember putting you on auto, but you are on auto. For now, we have just 32 remaining in the peloton. We're having a hard time keeping up with the pace. Lieberman is back up here. 28k to go. Let him work his way forward. There's another rider down here in the rain. A lot is happening, and Lieberman is once again dropped. Put him back on auto. Back up to 81. Make up your mind. He's almost done, actually. He can gel. I don't think he's going to be of use to us. We got four guys for our final run in. It's Magnus Court Nielsen, who is the current number one. He's not a great sprinter, but he did a really good job with the prologue. Four riders left of the break, but they are down to 37 seconds now, so we've just about reeled them in. And Lieberman, can he get back up here? He's slowly made his way forward with 12k. Lieberman, sit up. Uh, at that point, makes perfect sense to sit up and not. <laughs> not be the one to pull that group back make somebody else do it and hope hope that they don't do it okay who's going to be our first lead out it's probably kayama uh, abdul is going at the rear shu yeah oscar is going to follow Zhu and then kayama and so really it's only a sprint of three as abdul uh, needs to get that free toe those are lapped riders, 9K. This is gonna let groups back in. We need to, we need to get on with what we're gonna do. Cannot go 99 with just three guys though. Especially with as bad as our flat ratings are, 7.8. There we go. Now we're in position. 7k. Gel kicks in for Kayama. And final gels. 5k. One last little hill. The, the finish is a little bit uphill here. Or has a little bit. 4k. Now we can start pushing hard for Kayama. We're in a good, strong position here. This is the last descent. He's going to start his soft sprint. Now full sprint. 2.7 out. 2.1 out. This is a little early, but it's the technical finish that is setting us up for Oscar. Oscar is in a great place. What can he do? What can he do? What can he do? Come on. No, no, no. Can't quite beat Lawless. He's so close to beating Lawless, though. So close. He gets second place. And Shu hangs on for third. Nice result there for us. Six seconds gained, four seconds gained. And Abdul is still chasing somewhere, coming in just behind Court Nielsen in 16th. I don't think we're going to get a time split, but wouldn't that be something if they would offer it there? They're not. They won't. <laughs> but look at all those splits. Look at all those massive, massive splits. Let's hope some riders lose time. It could help positions a little bit. I don't see it happening, but we should at least have that fifth place for Abdul, hopefully. Well, we know two of the three who got the time bonuses at the end. No time gaps, of course. None, none, none. <laughs> All the way down to 79th. 
There was like six groups there. Oh, and Hob... Ah, Lawless. His 10 seconds gained. Jumps him to fourth. And Abdul, we did need that second. Ah. To keep it top five. I mean, top five wouldn't have done anything for our overall objective. It's not a big deal. It's just a disappointing one. And so Abdul finishes just sixth. Magnus Court Nielsen, I don't know how he picked up bonus time to go ahead of Bevan. He gained 10 seconds. He won one of those two quick simmed sprint stages. That's unbelievable. But Abdul gets sixth overall. Kayama gets 23rd. And Oscar moves up to 25th. So we do get three guys inside the top 25th. Tw top 25 in which a race had plenty of star power. It wasn't necessarily their profile. And what was his profile, he did okay with. But he did it without the race day condition bonus he could have, should have had. Had he had a better bonus, he easily could have been four to five seconds better off, in which case we might have been able to squeeze him onto the podium. Not to be, that's okay. Still a good race. Abdul second in the under 25s, one second behind Ayuso. Here we are, mid-May, late May, really. And I have nothing on the calendar other than, you know, me clicking that quick sim button a lot to get us to the signing period. So that will be next time. That's going to do it for this one. I'm the Cath Long Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there and bye for now.